Hello, and welcome to the second webinar in our Sea Extreme webinar series. Today we'll be discussing the findings from Forrester's recent Total Economic Impact Study on Confirmant Horizons. Before I introduce our speakers, I wanted to remind you that we'll be recording today's session, and we'll send the recording and slides uh, out to you soon after the webinar. Please also use the hashtag CXStream to follow the conversation on Twitter, and you can ask your questions in the chat window on the left-hand side of your screen. Our speakers today include Adrian Breslin Capaldo from Forrester and our very own Stacy Neville. Adrian is a consultant with Forrester's Total Economic Impact, or TEI, consulting practice. She works with Forrester clients to measure and communicate the value of vendor solutions, providing ROI business cases based on costs, benefits, flexibility, and risk associated with specific investments. Stacy Neville is an engagement management professional with over 18 years of experience managing employee and customer loyalty programs from both the client and vendor sides of the business. Stacy is an expert in VOC program methodology and operational metrics. And with that, Adrian, I'll pass it over to you to get the program started. Thanks so much, Beth. So as Beth mentioned, my name is Adrian Breslin Capaldo, and I'm a consultant at Forrester Research. Uh, as she mentioned, I'm part of our Total Economic Impact Consulting Group here at Forrester. My focus is really helping organizations to evaluate and quantify the financial impact of their technology investments through a methodology we have developed called TEI, or Total Economic Impact. Today I'm going to discuss a recent study we completed around the financial impact of Confirmit. So before we get to the fun part, um, I just have a few disclosures about the work that we have done with Confirmit. This is an abridged webinar version of a full case study we conducted on the Confirmit solution. The study was commissioned by Confirmit and delivered by Forrester. Uh, we make no assumptions as to the potential return on investment that other organizations will receive. We based our case study off of several customer interviews we conducted, uh, and those customers were provided by Confirmit. Uh, we suggest that uh, you use your own estimates within the framework that we've built out that we'll walk through today, uh, and that's also uh, in the report, to determine the ROI that you could expect from this investment. All right, so for today's agenda, over the next few minutes, we'll be going through a bit of an introduction uh, where we'll talk about the motivation for doing these TEI studies, as well as a bit about the methodology and framework that we use. I'll then give you a quick executive summary of the results, and then we'll dive a bit deeper into the analysis. Uh, I'll give you some highlights from the interviews and who we spoke to, and outline the benefit and cost categories we included in the framework to come up with our study conclusions. I'll then talk about some of the factors of flexibility and risk that we've also included in this financial analysis, uh, and then we'll take a look at the overall findings uh, and what that means for your potential return on investment. Let's take a look at what total economic impact is and how it can help the business. Forrester has found in our research that next level business case justifications are increasingly vital for critical technology investments. Uh, you can see here when thinking about the question, do I need a business case, IT decision makers are increasingly saying, yep, I do. Uh, this pie chart summarizes some survey findings where we found out that over 90% of IT decision makers find value in a business case. Uh, these IT decision makers also want to apply standard criteria and factors to these uh, investment opportunities. And that's really what this case study presents, some standard categories for costs and benefits that can be used to evaluate uh, the technology investments and help you make those decisions. Now, let's consider what, an, what is an effective business case. This table here summarizes some of the common pieces that are included in the various kinds of business cases. A common one is total cost of ownership. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's right here in the first column. This looks at IT cost and IT cost savings. This has traditionally been a strong way decision makers evaluate opportunities, looking solely at what it's going to cost and what it's going to save in terms of IT. So things like hardware, software, and the labor involved. When we extend that to an ROI business case study, that extends it a bit more into how does it impact the users of that technology in terms of productivity, in terms of effectiveness, that kind of thing. And finally, what we do with the TEI methodology is we look to extend that beyond just the IT impact and the business impact, but to incorporate factors of risk and uncertainty as well as future strategic impact. 
we feel this presents a holistic picture of that investment and aids in making a more complete decision. Here we have uh, a quick summary of the total economic impact methodology that we use. This is based on Forrester's research and it's been around for over 15 years. Uh, we've applied it to a number of different situations and cases, so it's a very flexible framework that can be applied in a lot of different situations. It's made up of four main areas. Uh, we take a look at the benefits and the costs. Uh, the costs really impact the budget, while the benefits typically have an impact on the business. Uh, we also look at flexibility options for the future. And we view all of these through the lens of risk. So we risk adjust all these categories to arrive at the total economic impact. For the purposes of this study, uh, we started out with some due diligence. We gathered some expertise internally at Forrester, and we also spoke to experts within the team at Confirmit. Uh, we then conducted customer interviews to really understand what the customer's experiences have been. We conducted five interviews with four different companies, uh, and we were able to ask them directly, what kind of benefits have you seen from your investment in Confirmit? What have you gotten out of it? We then took a look at all of that data and constructed a representative financial model based upon the data received during the customer interview process. I'll get into some of the details about that later, but the financial model is meant to provide organizations a way to measure and evaluate the financial impact of investing in Confirmit. Finally, we wrote the case study document to summarize those financial findings, but also to present some of the color behind the numbers. Really talk about what we heard in those interviews beyond just the financial metrics. So that's the process that we followed uh, to put this study together. Now let's take a quick look at the results that we found. This slide really captures the results of the case study. Through our interviews, we found that Confirmit enables organizations to improve their customer experience in order to generate new incremental sales. Financially speaking, as you can see, the return on investment for the three-year analysis we conducted was 326%, with total benefits totaling $4.85 million and a net present value of $3.7 million. Now, I want to jump into the details of those analysis uh, that we conducted so you can really understand where we got those numbers and how we reached these conclusions. Let's begin with some details about the interviews themselves. For this study, we conducted five interviews with representatives from the following four companies, uh, all of whom are Confirmit customers. First is a Fortune 100 consumer retailer based in the U.S. Uh, with an international presence. Prior to the investment in Confirmit, the organization used outside vendors to collect its customer feedback. Confirmit, it receives almost 6 million survey completes each year. Uh, next, we spoke with a large insurance corporation with an estimated 88 million customers worldwide. Uh, we interviewed one key division within the uh, very large uh, insurance corporation. So prior to implementing Confirmit, this uh, key division we spoke with um, used a third-party survey provider to capture customer feedback. Now with Confirmit, uh, the, this division has over 85,000 survey completes each year. We also spoke with a UK-based UK retail bank with about 60 million personal uh, and small business accounts. For the organization invested in Confirmit, the bank largely used phone calls through the call center to gather customer feedback. Now it has almost half a million survey completes each year with Confirmit. Finally, uh, we met with a Fortune 500 US-based retailer. Prior to their implementation of Confirmit, the company used ad hoc focus groups and surveys run through individual business groups to gather customer feedback, but they had no cohesive plan or sharing of these findings. Uh, using Confirmit, it collects 175,000 survey completes each year. During our interviews with these customers, we heard from them about some of the drivers that led them to investing in Confirmit. We found out that these companies had a need across the organization for customer feedback information to help improve overall customer satisfaction, increase customer retention, strengthen their reputation in the marketplace, and ultimately to improve the bottom line. We also heard that the customer feedback data that these organizations 
were currently gathering before they made the investment was very disorganized and they didn't have the proper technology in place uh, in order to give them a complete thorough view of that data. Finally, uh, the company told us that they wanted to be able to act upon and track the feedback that they received. There was a de desire to use the data to make smarter, better business decisions, make a powerful impact on the customer experience, but they needed a way to make sense of the data to act on it. Our interviews uncovered that Confirmit was selected not only because it helped the organization with the goals we just talked about, but because it was also a cost-effective, flexible, and robust end-to-end -end solution that helped support their customer experience needs. Organizations told us that the investment in Confirmit is regarded as a key piece of a larger effort to improve the customer experience of these organizations. Our interviews highlighted that Confirmit was often selected due to how comprehensive the platform is. Not only were the interviewees impressed with how inclusive the features and functionality are, but the organizations also spoke to me about how flexible the platform is. Uh, one of the key factors for these organizations was the fact that Confirmit survey design and data collection uses multiple uh, channels for that survey design, for that data collection, ensuring that the customers are reached effectively in whichever uh, way meets their needs the best. Our interviewees also described the importance of the data that Confirmit captures. Uh, each interviewee discussed the broad set of internal stakeholders and users of the data within their organization, as the data has an impact on decisions made across many different business groups. The features and functionality of the platform enable these organizations to capture, analyze, and build important insights from their customer feedback. Those customers who we spoke with who have been working with outside vendors also highlighted the fact that the solution helped them keep their voice of customer program costs in check. These customers who use uh, the SaaS-based model also found that they did not need to invest heavily in hardware and maintenance, um, so they were uh, found an additional way to keep those costs in check. Interviewees also shared that they were able to get up and running on the platform uh, quite quickly compared with other uh, platforms. Finally, many of the organizations also spoke of how Confirmit's specialized methodology and professional service offerings help to plan and design their voice of customer programs. We heard how some of the organizations use Confirmit's professional services to ensure that their voice of customer program runs smoothly from beginning to end. Confirmit's methodology and professional services were seen by many interviewees to elevate the ROI of the investment and help the organizations get the most out of the solution. So along with these challenges and drivers, I've pulled out a few of the particularly compelling quotes that we heard from the uh, interviews that I wanted to share with you. I'm not going to read them word for word, but I just wanted to share these with you uh, so you can take a look at them. All right, so before we go into deeper detail on the benefits these organizations saw, I wanted to give you a little more detail on how we calculated them. As we discussed, we interviewed the different companies to get their uh, perspective. The purpose of the financial analysis as part of our TEI methodology, we created a composite organization to illustrate the quantifiable costs and benefits of implementing Confirmit. Again, this is based on the interviews, and we looked at the characteristics of those interviewed companies, and we synthesized them to come up with a representative organization that captures the most common characteristics. That way, we can present a single financial framework based on the experiences of the, all the interviews. So the associated ROI analysis that we're going through today is based on this composite organization, and all of the numbers correlate to that composite organization. So for the purposes of this study, our composite organization that we put together has the following characteristics. It's an international organization with a strong online presence as well as brick and mortar stores. The organization has a voice of the customer program ran by their market research and customer experience team, which is made up of 15 people. Prior to their investment in Confirmit, uh, the composite organization used a third-party vendor to manage its survey fielding and analyze that data in-house. So 
After an RFP process, the composite organization selected Confirmit. The composite organization implemented a SAS version of Confirmit and receives around a million completes with Confirmit each year. The representative organization worked with professional services team uh, at Confirmit to support its program. All right, so let's take a look at the benefits that we included in our financial analysis, all uncovered from the interviews with our customers. We looked at five key categories of benefits. Let's take a look at those. So we're going to take a high level look here, and then we'll go through each of them in detail. First, we looked at increased revenue opportunities through improved customer experience. We found that improving the customer experience correlates to a clear revenue opportunity. Using Confirmit to collect and analyze customer feedback, make customer experience improvements, and track the results of those improvements, help the composite organization improve its customer satisfaction scores, and therefore improve their revenue opportunities. The next benefit is the improved productivity of the customer experience team members. Just analysis and reporting capabilities and other key features of Confirmit made the customer experience team more productive in their day-to-day -day activities. Our next benefit takes a look at the improved productivity of users outside of the customer experience team. Key users found that Confirmit's features and functionality created actionable insights and provided them with data to make smarter business decisions and improve their overall productivity. We also looked at how key processes were improved with the use of, the, of Confirmit's alert management functionality. The use of Confirmit has the power to affect a number of different key processes, but for the purpose of this study, we focused on one key type of complaint management. The alert management functionality of Confirmit allows the composite organization to drastically reduce the time spent identifying and resolving issues. Our final benefit takes a look at the cost savings the organization found from no longer relying on third-party survey provider platforms. So now let's take a deeper look at what each of these entails. The first benefit identified as part of this analysis and our largest benefit looks at the potential revenue opportunity an organization can see from improving their customer experience and customer satisfaction scores. Forrester has put together um, a bunch of research that takes a look at the revenue opportunities by industry from improved customer experience across three key areas. Additional purchases made by existing customers, revenue saved from reduced customer churn, and new sales from new customers. Based on this research and a few additional studies about customer experience and customer satisfaction scores, we were able to tie a dollar amount to each point increase in customer satisfaction scores. So um, I didn't want to bog down our conversation today, but if you're curious, the details of the methodology and the calculation uh, are laid out explicitly in the study we're discussing. But today, let's take a high-level look at how this benefit was calculated. The benefit reflects the composite organization's increase of four points from before the investment in Confirmit to after the investment. Our composite organization recorded a net promoter score of 78 prior to its investment in Confirmit, 82 after its investment. So as the relationship between net promoter score and revenue growth is variable depending on the organization, this specific case study is going to apply current Forrester research to build a model of the potential revenue opportunities from improved customer satisfaction scores. So looking at the total revenue opportunity, we can deduce that each above average point, um, point increase is worth about $7 million. All right. So take a look at the whole calculation. We have the total revenue opportunity, which is the sum of the three categories we discussed before, the point improvement on the net promoter score, the value of each one of those points, and then the total value of that point increase. So understanding that customer experience scores can improve based on a number of different factors across an organization's customer experience strategy, and based on feedback from these interviewed organizations, 
we applied a 15% attribution rate to confirm it. So that is that 15% of the opportunity gained is attributable to adopting confirm it. In addition, we took into consideration that using Net Promoter Score or any type of customer experience score to predict revenue growth is highly variable for different industries, for different organizations. So the model takes into account a 15% risk adjustment. Over three years, the risk adjusted present value total was a little over $3 million for the increased revenue opportunity. Another key benefit from the Confirmant implementation was an overall improvement in the productivity of the customer experience team. We heard that the use of the tool made the team more productive in their everyday activities. Improved productivity results from the improved analysis capabilities and the improved reporting capabilities of the Confirmant platform. Also, the dashboards ensure that the team members have fast, easy visibility into the data that's uh, important to their specific day-to-day -day tasks. Before Confirmant, uh, these team members spent significantly more time gathering all the pertinent information, analyzing it, and putting it together into reports. The team had to spend time trying to hunt down the right data, and we heard that oftentimes by the time they were able to actually get the data, analyze it, and produce some, uh, an actionable uh, report, some actionable insights, data was a month or two months old at that point. Confirm its automated reporting has greatly cut down on the time spent by the team creating reports. Uh, and with the implementation of Confirmant, the customer experience staff members are easily able to find up-to-date information in real time. So now with that time savings, we heard that these team members can now spend uh, their time on higher value tasks, such as actually findings uh, and the recommendations from the data to educate the organization as a whole. All right, so to calculate this benefit, we look at the team members on the composite organization's customer experience team. Based on the feedback from the interviewed organizations, uh, we estimate that the team members will see an initial productivity improvement of 15%, growing over time to 25% as they become more acclimated with the solution and its features uh, and embed it in their day-to-day -day activities. To provide a more conservative calculation, we also adjust productivity savings by assuming that only 50% of this time uh, saved is actually used for productive work. Um, so we assume that you know, someone's going to go get some cups of coffee, hang out with their friends uh, with this additional time that they have. So we're only applying 50% of that. With an assumed annual fully loaded salary of $100,000, the risk adjusted three year present value total benefit for the improved efficiency of the customer experience team is $330,400. This also accounts for a risk adjustment of 10% because we know that not all organizations are going to have the same number of team members uh, and the productivity gains may vary. All right, so in addition to those customer experience folks, uh, we also heard from each company that this data is widely used within their organization outside of the customer experience team. Um, the list of the stakeholders across the organizations is quite widespread. Other individuals such as the executive leadership, um, customer service and call center reps, business analysts, uh, development team members, and managers and sales folks from the different lines of business, they all use this data and insights from Confirmant to help them make smarter, better decisions. Confirmant provides uh, improved visibility of the data, including deeper insights and analysis capabilities that were previously not available uh, to them. The flexible dashboards help to ensure that these stakeholders have instant visibility into the data that is important to them. So each person has the data that they need specifically. So to calculate this benefit, we assume that in year one, 300 users across the composite organization are using Confirmant data as part of their job. As the organization begins to use Confirmant more often and learns the different types of roles that could benefit from this data, use expands across the organization and by year three, 400 people are using the data. Forster conservatively estimates that these employees use the data from Confirmant for about 10% of their work hours per week, but many will use it more than this. 
Um, based on feedback from the interviewed organizations, we estimate that in year one, these employees see an average productivity improvement of 5%. As they become more accustomed to using the platform and embed it in their day-to-day -day activities, this increases to 15% by year three. Compensate for the variety of adoption challenges and efficiency gains that could potentially affect this calculation. This benefit was risk adjusted and reduced by 10%. The present value risk adjusted total benefit resulting from improved productivity of key users of the Confirmit platform over the three years was just over a million dollars. Our interviewed organizations um, highlighted a number of key processes that were improved due to the use of Confirmit. For example, one organization used the data to improve uh, product development and product road mapping, and it used customer feedback to understand where to invest uh, in its research and development processes. Another used customer feedback to help improve its uh, internal training processes. While these processes that were affected varied from organization to organization, one key use of Confirmit across our interviewed organizations was the use of the alert functionality. Confirmit's alert management functionality has enabled the process of immediately identifying key customer complaints and tracking the resolution of the issue, as well as facilitating steps to improve the customer experience. The time spent on these tasks varies from organization to organization. Some of our interviewed organizations highlighted that they were able to handle customer complaints in hours compared with days previously. Uh, another organization said it never had a way to react to customer complaints as it does now. So this organization highlighted that just the fact of identifying the complaint was a massive improvement with Confirmit. Calculate this benefit focus on one key type of complaint management. Um, using the feedback from the interviewed organizations, we assume that there's an average of 365 of these complaints each year. Prior to the investment in Confirmit, the composite organization took an average of eight man hours to identify and resolve a customer complaint issue of this kind. With the investment in Confirmit, the time to identify and resolve those specific issues was reduced by 70%. So if we assume an average salary of $29, the three-year uh, risk-adjusted present value total benefit was $131,966. As the number of complaints and time spent on each varies from organization to organization, we took that number and risk-adjusted it down by 10%. One thing that I really want to highlight here about this calculation is that Confirmit can improve a number of different types of processes and they vary based on the organization and the industry. I definitely urge you to take into consideration the other ways that Confirmit could have an impact on your business processes uh, when considering the total benefit of Confirmit. Specific calculation uh, is very conservative look at something that could potentially have a big impact on your organization. So our final benefit is a smaller percentage of our overall benefits received, but still very important. Again, the full calculation is laid out explicitly in the study if you're interested in checking it out. So prior to the investment in Confirmit, the interviewed organizations each handled their customer feedback differently. Some used third-party survey provider vendors. Others used uh, surveys conducted over the phone. Similarly, the cost of these projects differs from organization to organization. For instance, we heard from one organization that its costs for Confirmit are a quarter of what it spent previously. Another organization shared that because everything was handled over the phone, the costs of conducting an individual survey were quite high. So Forrester took uh, a conservative approach and estimated that the previous survey platform the composite organization used for customer feedback cost the organization about $40,000 each year. To account for variability in the cost by organization, we risk adjusted this calculation down by 10%. The resulting three-year risk adjusted present value cost savings was $89,527. So here we present the benefits over the three years. As you can see, we look at the three-year analysis uh, when we look at the three-year analysis, 
a representative organization expects risk-adjusted present value total benefits of over $4.8 million. So now that we've looked at the benefits, let's take a look at the costs uh, associated with an investment conferment. On this slide, I've summarized the costs that we included in our financial analysis, which we uncovered from our interviews with the conferment customers. As you can see, there are two main categories of costs. There are platform costs and professional service fees, and internal implementation and ongoing administrative uh, support costs. These costs represent the mix of internal and external costs experienced by the composite organization for initial planning and implementation, and then the ongoing maintenance associated with the solution. Here at the bottom, we have the summary of the initial costs as well as the costs each year, uh, which are made up of these cost categories, leading to a total risk-adjusted present value cost of just over a million dollars over the three years we analyzed. So earlier in our conversation, we talked about how uh, beyond the costs and the benefits, the TEI methodology does account for both flexibility and risk. Let's take a quick look at what that means. When we Speak of flexibility, we're referring to an investment in an additional capacity or capability that could be turned into a business benefit for some future additional investment. In the case of Confirmit, we can easily see a case where a company can add additional users or additional surveys to get further business benefits and further enhance our voice of customer programs. Uh, in addition, one of the things that's great about Confirmit is that it's continuously working to add additional solutions uh, that its customers can leverage to gain further insights into their customer feedback. Um, they recently rolled out Confirmit Smart Hub, which enables organizations to capture and map customer data from multiple data sources into one repository. So Smart Hub links uh, answers from surveys with financial, transactional, and operational data to support more contextual surveys as well as aggregation of data for analysis and reporting. Uh, another example is Confirmant Genius, which is a text analytics tool uh, that analyzes unstructured data, um, which is often considered too complicated, too costly, too time consuming for companies to sit down and analyze. Um, Confirmant Genius automates the analysis of that data uh, to help better understand customers and how they think and feel about an organization. So TEI also uses risks uh, as a filter to capture the uncertainty and cost and benefit estimates. We adjust our numbers in consideration of risk uh, because the risk adjusted numbers are more realistic. In general, um, risk affects costs by raising the original est uh, estimates and they affect benefits by reducing the original estimates. All right, so let's take a look at our financial summary. A look at what all this means for us based on all the information we gathered during our interviews, we have found that with Confirmit, our representative organization can expect a risk adjusted ROI of 326% with a net present value of over $3.7 million. Right, so that concludes the total economic impact portion of our chat today. So now I'll turn things over to Stacy. Great, thank you so much. So what I wanted to do was um, just follow on all of the great information that we just heard and really look at um, how this has impacted um, a few actual real clients. Um, so um, as we uh, best let you know, my name is Stacey Neville. I am RBS Consulting Director at Dirt Confirmant. And we do have the opportunity to talk to some of our own clients as well about some of the um, the benefits they have achieved. So um, in, in light of what we've just learned, what we've just talked about, um, and looking at some of the ways that a confirmant program can help um, an organization, I'm specifically talking about increased revenue, um, improving the productivity of the um, customer experience for team members, employees, as well as improving the productivity uh, for people who use the application, able to get better data quicker um, and react to it. Um, and also we've got some clients that were able to achieve some gains in uh, improving key processes as well as cost savings from 
um, retiring some, some programs. So I think it aligns very well with the information we just saw. The first example is um, a study done with a medium-sized regional energy company um, a few years ago. And they were able to find that their promoters, um, by segmenting promoters versus detractors, their promoters spent nearly 50% more than their detractors. And they were 20 times more likely to recommend others. They were able to really um, hone in on what activity their, their promoters were actually engaging upon. Um, their promoters were also one and a half times more likely to use add-on services. So they were um, not only putting their money where their mouth was um, as far as recommending to others, but using additional services. Um, and that their overall satisfaction increased incrementally with each add-on purchase. Uh, so um, it, it can guide the um, practices of how we resell, how we upsell, and um, that the appreciation that the more products someone has, the more happy they are with this particular company. Um, and our outcomes were fantastic. They actually were able to reduce their operating costs um, by over a million dollars, by $1.1 million. Um, they saw a 20% increase in, the, in their call handle time. Uh, so they were able to be more efficient um, in their, their practices uh, within their call center. And they were also able to increase their conversion rate to upsell products. Um, additional add-on products by 12%, which resulted in 18,000 additional sales. So that's one example of um, an organization that used uh, a comprehensive voice of the customer program that was open to their customers through their call center and their follow-up on inbound inquiry to deliver increased revenue. Another example um, that we've uh, seen with one of our clients um, looking at their value of their detractors as well, um, against their value of promoters. So with um, the segmentation model and what's available within the system, just understanding the value of each of those groups, um, uh, this organization was able to quickly understand that their detractors um, were worth considerably less than, than promoters. So um, that in itself told them we want to obviously create, some, create more promoters um, so just from a value perspective, what they spend with us, what they have with us, the number of products they have with us, um, they're worth so much more. So let's put some practices in place, some policies in place to, to make sure we're um, gaining more promoters and moving people up that stream. And what they found was as they moved, um, they were able to move 2% of their customers into being promoters, um, that they were able to in, um, increase their spend, uh, the spend of those promoters by nearly $2 million, and that's um, with a huge win for them. Now, in this case, we use an NPS metric, um, but I think as we talked about, we can, we can use lots of other metrics. Um, and we basically were looking to, to segment the customer base and better understand um, what each of those segments uh, could deliver to the business. Another example is um, of a global financial leader that uh, was basically going through a merchant acquisition at the time, they realized that that was going to be a challenge, um, and not to mention the fact that it was a very large organization with um, lots of facilities and um, customer interaction points. So what we were able to do is put in a solution that had a broad range of survey programs across all of the departments, um, looking at everything from relationships to specific transactional um, interactions uh, from the banking user. And um, more than 20% I'm sorry, more than 20 record research surveys across the entire uh, enterprise. And key to their program, um, as we talked about, was action management alert to ensure that they were following up on, uh, on any issues that may arise and solving issues, both practically, in the moment, um, and strategically. So really letting those issues uh, bubble up and really understanding what those major issues are uh, and going after them to remove them from, from uh, regular customer interactions. Uh, this particular organization was able to um, have great results and gains um, and really see how it improved their productivity and their cost savings from other disparate survey um, programs they were running through having um, year-over-year, -year, multiple year-over-year -year improvements in their overall satisfaction scores uh, and also improved communication. So their productivity improved internally because they were, they were communicating better and they had better support strategies for um, converting products and getting customers onboarded to new products and upgrades. Uh, they were also, as I said, made, able to reduce their research costs. So they were able to replace a number of um, kind of 
Rove or disparate survey systems that were running in their organization with one platform, and they saw a cost savings there as well. And finally, we have um, another organization, it's a major technology retailer that was able to see a huge um, win from changes in key processes. So this particular organization came to us with a challenge of better understanding um, the, the, what their non-purchasers are saying, um, who is leaving the store, um, and, and by using that, using that data to try to increase revenue. So we looked at um, all types of segments that came into their establishment, their purchasers, their non-purchasers, um, event goers, um, and you know those that were even returning, to, to really understand what the drivers of loyalty were um, and behavior were within those those individual uh, visitor type groups. And again, paramount to this particular program was action management, alerting and action management, which was driven down to the store level, um, went to manager store, assistant store manager, so that those issues could be acted upon and rectified. Um, and this particular um, client was able to achieve great outcomes. Um, they identified the drivers of store loyalty among those four different groups. Um, able to, to figure out how to turn around some non-purchasers into purchasers, or when they would become purchasers, basically better understanding that purchase um, kind of timeline um, and what people were, were doing in their process. They were able to increase conversion and evangelism. So they were able to increase their um, loyalty scores, advocacy scores, and um, better understand how to convert a customer to, or non-purchaser to being a customer, um, and even retain uh, some of their the folks that were returning. Um, they were able to provide their store personnel with, with fantastic behavioral data to recognize and reward and, and improve their performance and their customer experience. And this had an effect on the, the business as a whole because it took the, the culture of the organization, the culture of their retail stores, from one of being um, kind of punitive um, you know, where people may, felt like they were being beat up for their scores to one of recognition uh, because they put in a number of kudos alerts or um, you did a great job alert and were able to reward and recognize employees based on that. And then finally, they were able to streamline their critical customer facing processes, and quite a few of them. Um, I mean, everything from how they rolled out new products and the timing of doing so to um, communications around store types and um, the impacts of future rollout communications, they were able to take that data and better understand and change processes that affected a number of their customers. Um, it, it completely impacted their process for new store openings. Um, and actually, this program eventually rolled over into um, event uh, attendees. So they rolled out a new program to focus on folks who attended events with and, within and with store members uh, and store personnel to better understand um, how to drive loyalty that way and how to drive sales that way. So they've achieved um, quite a bit of, of great ROI. So those are just a few examples of how some of our real-life clients have been able to use uh, the Confirmant platform, the system, and our consultants to uh, improve their sales processes, increase their revenue, and uh, also reduce cost savings. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks so much, Stacey um, and Adrian. We really appreciate ha you having uh, having you on today's call. Uh, we have a couple questions that have come in, and I think we have time. Um, so, Stacey, I'll start with you. Um, I know you've gone over a lot of client examples in your slides, um, but just connecting it to the webinar that you did last week, um, service recovery, that really relates closely to a benefit that Adrian highlighted around the use of alert management, um, and their, therefore the ability to handle complaints more quickly. Um, do you have any examples that you can share with us where you've seen that improvement um, or a similar improvement related to service recovery? So uh, absolutely. We have um, a, a number of client examples, and I'll, I'll pick on the last one, the retail example, um, where individual customer feedback um, from an alert that goes to a store personnel that goes directly to someone who's going to fix that problem actually led to a huge change in um, processes of communication. And it, it started out as one alert. It started out as one 
um, client response, but through sharing of best practices across store management, across regions, they were able to see that this was an issue that was coming up across the, the country um, in more than one occasion, and they were able to focus on that more at a strategic level. So when I said earlier that you know, when we deal with issues or problems, we want to deal with them tactically. We want to um, fix the problem for the customer, really focus on that issue, and make sure that it doesn't uh, reoccur by looking at that issue strategically. So really letting that um, issue, especially if it's reoccurring, bubble up to management, bubble up to senior management and executive offices, and finding a way to fix that process. And that's probably the best formula for um, making sure that we're not only handling the service recovery um, at the moment, but making sure that issue does not reoccur. Excellent. Thanks, Stacey. Mm -hmm. um, Adrian, over to you. Uh, how, how do I adapt this to my own organization? Sure. Um, great question. So you know, when I think about this, I think the best way uh, to think about how to apply this um, to your organization is to adjust the assumptions included. So uh, you want to think about um, the size of your team, uh, the different types of processes you might be using um, that could be improved through the investment. Uh, you may want to get an idea from your uh, confirmant account manager about the cost for your specific organization. Uh, and think about what you are spending now uh, gathering surveys. Um, you know, one of the things, Beth, that uh, I'd like to mention is that we're actually going to be putting together, um, for those of uh, our listeners who are in the retail or financial services sector, um, we're actually going to be putting together specific case studies um, for these industries uh, in the near future. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, you know, it'll give just another uh, additional idea of how you could apply uh, this to your organization if you're in one of those industries. But really, I think it's all about taking those assumptions uh, and just updating that um, for what your company looks like. Okay, great. Um, I think that that will be really helpful. And um, to build off of your mention of those uh, two additional TEI reports focusing on those verticals, uh, we also have created an infographic that summarizes uh, the results of this report, um, and we plan to send that to everyone that's on the call today. Um, so look uh, for that along with the recording and slides over the next um, few days. Um, I think we'll probably give uh, everyone a few minutes back and, and wrap things up there. I do uh, want to mention before we go that our CX Extreme Webinar Week continues tomorrow uh, with our webinar on mobile banking feedback, the keys to achieving a better customer experience. And that's with Lisa Garthside and Miguel Ramos from Confirmit. Um, they'll use real life examples to talk about uh, how you can improve your mobile banking experience. Um, and as I mentioned before, um, we'll be sending out the slides and recording. And thank you so much to our speakers today. Thanks, Adrian, and thanks, Stacy. And thanks, everyone, for joining. Have a wonderful day.